I can finally finish this, the fully realized version of the Moto Edge Plus. I did not expect this would take as long as it did. Moto took a minute to get this folio case and stylus out, but now we've got the completed vision of what the Edge Plus can be. This strategy is similar to, but a little better executed than what LG did with the modular V60 design. If you want a phone, this phone is a solid phone competitor priced against similarly premium phones. If you want this to be a computer replacement, you can add a monitor or a TV, and Ready4 is taking a nice little step up above what we can get from something like Dex. And if you want it to be a Note competitor, you can add this stylus to a case on the back, and then the case can also prop up the phone, giving you a little sort of tablet-y style angled workspace. I really like this strategy. You buy as much phone or as much computer or as much tablet as you want through these companion accessories. And Moto doesn't have to make one-off specialty devices that would be more expensive to support. They make this one phone. From my first impressions and over to my review, I'm gonna link, I actually did make a review on this phone for reviews.org. Uh, that'll be linked in the description here too. This phone has been beautifully polished with only one major OTA. The main update strategy leans heavily on regular fast updates, little component updates through Google Play. If there's an update for Ready4, you don't wait for a massive OTA, you get a little Ready4 update. Numerous camera improvements. You know, those problems that I pointed out with like the video uh, in, in the camera app and aspect ratio, those are all gone. And the UI for the camera is faster to navigate and the controls make way more sense. Those all came from these little updates kind of peppered through the last couple months of using this phone. This definitely doesn't stand up to some of the mega camera sensor phones that I've been reviewing lately, but it's easily competitive in the premium tier, and this is the best shooter I've ever handled with a Motorola badge. We end up with a healthy mix of work and play. This is exactly the kind of productivity-focused device where a good document scanner makes perfect sense to include. And the selfie camera was built to be used in a mixed work environment. This is a post-pandemic webcam that will blur backgrounds and face track in a Zoom call. These are all the right features for the right time. I, just in general, I kind of feel like Moto has now really achieved the vision of a phone as computer that they've been working on since the Atrix. We went through Moto mods. This is a better realization of that philosophy. Ready4 is an absolute monster feature. It's a silly name, but the software is great and it surpasses DeX in a number of key lifestyle areas. I just recently got a new battery powered 4K display and seeing a phone drive a 4K desktop without having to buy a special dock or use any other apps, that's really fresh. I mean, it really is a shame that, you know, like a fancy iPad from like 2020 can't drive a similar desktop mode with multitasking and stuff. You know, you'd think that those beastly A12Z Bionic processors would would be able to keep up better, but I guess not. <laughs> Snarkiness aside, that's what's critical here. There's a huge crossover now on desktop programs, browser-based apps, and mobile apps. Now, we could still do with a better full-fledged desktop-grade web browser, but the newer updates to Edge and Firefox get us pretty close. I don't know, it's just strange to me that we have to keep defending this idea against techies. We've got gobs of compute power on tap. Compute power taking us well beyond phone screen communication basics and social media. Just because someone can't find the exact desktop program they're familiar with, doesn't mean they can't achieve laptop replacement use from this phone by using a different app, <laughs> adding a different app to their workflow. There's a very good reason someone might wanna spend more on a phone and it's not to open Instagram a fraction of a millisecond faster. We're at a point where this premium phone purchase could displace someone's need for a home PC or a laptop. I'm not sorry to harp on this. You know, those folks acting like it won't be a perfect one-to-one -one replacement for everyone and people might need to learn a few new apps, so I'll complain about it not being perfect and act like no one should use it, is the dumbest, worst kind of tech enthusiasm. This is an expensive purchase. It can help displace other expensive purchases. Moto is crushing right now, both for work and play, 
and, and they're absolutely the top option today for leveraging the total compute power of a phone in any way you might wanna use that compute power. The fun stuff has been well supported too. Gaming performance is excellent. I've been dumping tons of games on this phone. I mean, obviously, if you run it really hard, you can nuke the battery, it will run warm. But I recently used it a fair bit to test the GameSir X3 controller and cooler. That little thermal assist helped a bunch for temperatures and sustained performance. I just wish Moto would give us some of those power management options like gaming phones and like Xperia's give us. I'd love to have charge separation on a phone with the best desktop mode. I think it's fair to say that battery life is likely the weak spot of this phone. I, it, this phone will try to accomplish every task to the maximum effort that you ask it to do. Using it in reasonable short bursts for phone stuff, you're gonna do fine. It should last all day and into the evening, but if you game hard for a bit, or if you edit a quick video, this fast and powerful reaction comes with a noticeable battery hit. And when you add this folio case, there is also a tiny bit of power draw, a trickle charge that goes to the stylus. This does have a wireless connection too. So standby times take a small but noticeable hit, keeping this powered in addition to the phone and the radios and all the background services. It's gonna be the issue we run into with full featured devices like this. Probably also one of the reasons why a Note 22 probably can't hang for battery as well as phones that aren't digitizer and stylus enabled. You don't wanna give up anything that the phone can do it's just so darn capable. So much so that I would probably recommend investing in the 67 watt Moto charger. Then if you have to top off during the day, it tops off crazy fast. But I do wanna backtrack just for a second here, talking about the stylus, cause it's really good. And this is about the closest we'll get to S Pen functionality. I had to turn my screen brightness down here, but the digitizer is great. The pen and screen support angle and tilt. So you, I, I'm doing a little shading, but then I can go to tip. You can see it's a really fine line. And then I have pressure sensitivity. All of this is working fast. There's almost no perceptible lag. And when I'm trying to draw really light lines, I don't do the ultra slow pen stylus test, but I'm perfectly happy. This is this is above and beyond my expectations for a stylus enabled Moto. It's the closest yet that we've seen to an S Pen. When the screen is off and you slide it out, just like other stylus enabled phones, we get a little notepad, that's super handy. A little indicator follows the tip of the pen around. We get the menu for quick actions. We can line up uh, different services and shortcuts. Like I can go into the menu and you can see all the things that you might wanna add to this little pen menu. But I did add like a little coloring book. So if Lex wants to kind of scribble in and we're just kind of kicking around maybe we're waiting for some food or we're stuck at a grocery store and you know she's pretty good as an artist she's probably way better at me when it comes to coloring in the lines the rest of it is super familiar we've got screenshots we've got cinemagraphs we've got gif makers pretty much any mobile tool that you might want for a variety of dis different disciplines this is a pen that's good enough you can use it for arts and graphics or you can use it for notes and journalism you can use it for text and there is a wireless connection component like i mentioned before so if we uh, pull up the camera you can see on my desk this is a terrible shot but you can click that button on the pen and it will take photos. It is a remote shutter. I will say that when you put this all together, this is sort of fine in a pocket. I've seen some complaints. Oh, you're gonna add all this bulk. Really the depth isn't an issue. If anyone's that sensitive to adding a slim pen in their pocket, I don't know what to tell someone who's that sensitive. And I do kind of like the lump when you set the phone down because it kind of angles it just a little bit. And now this horizontal window makes a lot more sense because it's of pointing the phone towards you in a way where you can catch those notifications when the screen lights up. It doesn't angle to the other side. It tips the phone in the direction that you should be looking at it. But I don't like it when an accessory adds functionality for one thing and then interrupts another feature on the phone. The pen location is basically gonna break wireless charging support. You have to pull the pen out before you can set the phone down on a charger, now it's charging, but then you fully top off your phone and you put the pen back in the sleeve and immediately this is gonna start trickle charging, making sure the pen is, is topped off. This is really the main part of this setup that feels 
inelegant. I don't know what a better solution would be though. The, the issue is, I don't know if you can move the pen to the side. I mean, that would be kind of cool because the folio case wraps and it creates this little triangle, just like what we've seen on tablets, right? You can, you can use it as a grip to really hold on to the phone. You can prop it up in a number of different ways. And there's a small gap on the side where you could conceivably put the stylus. But I genuinely don't know if you could move the stylus to the side without making the pen charging more expensive to incorporate in the guts of the phone. Like this is right off of the main wireless charging and reverse wireless charging coil that's in the phone. So I think the pen can just piggyback off of that. It reduces your manufacturing costs. Now in the past, I've never been the biggest fan of cases, you know, sort of wallet or book cover cases that cover the screen. This is very good protection for the phone though. I do like how, how much of this is covered. And even though we have the window, it should keep everything safe, even in a drop. But if you're not rocking a smartwatch and you want better notifications. This is a good solution for protecting the screen and still giving you a strip of information to play with. And the flexibility of a tablet style folio case, I mean, it's just really fun. All of the different options that you can have for propping the phone up, for, for laying the phone flat, or for going totally vertical. I'm not blowing anyone's mind here. We love this kind of stuff on tablets. It's really handy having something like that on a phone. And that's totally where we should wrap this up. Phones aren't one thing. We gotta look at different features, we gotta look at pros and cons, but Moto has climbed into a position that I really respect. This is one of the most flexible solutions of the year and performs at a tier really well against phones like the Note 22. We're talking comparisons, the Note is gonna have the higher resolution display, it's gonna have more fun S Pen features, it's a little bit more refined, and it's definitely gonna have a better main camera sensor. But the Moto has a better desktop mode, much faster charging, a number of folks might like the image processing from the slightly smaller camera sensor better than what the Note 22 spits out, and comparing 512 gigabyte models with the Moto folio case and stylus costs included, this Moto Edge Plus is going to save you $300 over a Note 22. And then it's going to save you even more when you need to buy a case and a fast but not as fast charger from Samsung. And this is, of course, comparing the recent $100 sale price for both phones. And we don't even need to play that game. Oh, but Samsung will give me the trade-in deal. Because there are trade-in deals for Motorola too. You can bring the Edge Plus down to 50 bucks. Samsung is not the only company that does sales and trade-ins. Dollar for dollar, feature for feature, we're looking at a $300 price difference. I can't see how any rational techie would disagree. That's a fun fight for a business grade, high performance, productivity phone that can replace a PC and it can still tackle the fun stuff. We've got a healthy spectrum here for productivity phones. Recently just covered the TCL, Stylus, 5G, and then we've got the Moto G Stylus as entry level and mid range options. We can move up then to the Moto Edge Plus here as a premium solution. The Note 22 is probably still the top choice as the crown jewel work phone. And then we can move over to exotic solutions like the Duo or the Fold, for people who want a little more of a pocket notebook tablet setup, the Edge Plus slots in perfectly as a great high performance option at a very good price. I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on the Moto Edge Plus. Again, right now, at the time this video was shot, there was $100 off for the 512 gigabyte version of this phone, taking it down to 899, definitely worth considering if you're looking to get your work done. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are checking out the links in my descriptions, if you're hitting my website, somegadgetguy.com, buying some merch, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Oh, my little Twitch button isn't working. I'll have to fix that on the website, but not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.